Danny, that issue, this issue of scale is really fundamental and it, and it really presents just tremendous challenges and the REV is kind of a, you know, a really case study in, in trying to address scale. We're going, so we're saying, we're looking, we're, we're looking at this kind of soil scale, we're looking at the soil profile scale, we're trying to look for a, a, something which will give us the right balance. Representativeness. Yeah, yeah, representativeness for our particular process. And so the, the REV, you know, here shows, goes from solids to, to pores, and then we get this nice average. And that is perfectly applicable to like a meter-ish scale, right? But then the interesting thing is that that same technique shows exactly the limitations of looking at one system of scale. Uh, but, but John, let me stop you for a minute. Yeah. If you remember, there is also um, a, a watershed representative, a representative elementary watershed. Mm -hmm. So people have uh, grappled with the issue of scale and came up with a concept similar to this representative elementary volume, which we talk about a soil sample, how to represent a soil sample effectively uh, for catchments. So they have a unit land that is representative of the catchment. So it's not only limited to soil. This concept of, uh, of uh, spatial averaging to come up with an emergent uh, property that is representative of the, of the, in this case, of porosity that will enter into the model, or in the case of watersheds, of uh, modeling uh, the hydrology of watershed, uh, is a is a way to address the scale challenge, but not the only way. I completely agree. Absolutely, and the, the interesting thing is, you know, people will talk about like soils as fractals. They'll say, "Oh my gosh, this soil is a nice fractal," and so therefore, once you see it at one scale, and you can just multiply it; it'll be at all different scales. And this is a very useful concept, kind of pictorially. But these things all break down. Everything breaks down across some particular scale, and that's really what we're talking about: is it look for those scale transitions where something which was really the, a pattern repeated up to some level then breaks down. And that could be from the chunk of soil up to the layered soil, or a, you know, if there were floods and stuff like that, then you have a completely different layering. And we'll also call that sub-grid scale, kind of where we'll, we'll say that I will represent things above this scale. Below that scale, I'll use some sort of kind of averaging. So you hear these kind of different terms of sub-grid scale, representative elementary volume, fractal properties, and they all relate and the REV is an excellent example of how you take a very complex, multi-scale problem, identify a scale of interest, and then define your terms for that scale of interest. And the key thing in this book we're trying to emphasize is don't go beyond the range at which that definition is useful. Let me add one more thing uh, about scale since we are already talking about the nuts and bolts of upscaling and scales, and that is the physics. Uh, many times we basically uh, casually go at increasingly larger scale, and that's very true in, uh, say, global scale modeling of processes. So we go from stuff that was defined over uh, uh, column scales into a field scale, which is still maybe acceptable, into regional and continental scale without ever checking that the physics that underlie this process uh, still hold. For example, if I apply, hypothetically, a gradient across uh, 10 kilometers, which will be the average distance between the centers of grids in a moderately uh, resolved uh, Earth system model, would I see a flux as we understand it, in, uh, as we'll understand it maybe later on in this book? The answer is probably not. So right. So you have to uh, Yeah, that. well, this is really a good point, and that people, um, you see something at one scale, you come up with this nice differential equation to describe that scale, and then you think, oh, we'll just go on forever this way. And, and you know... Uh, that was the point you made about not to exceed the scale of applicability. Exactly. Uh, Jim Duge uh, gave an amazing set of lectures, and, and look up his, his work in this area, where he really looked at, at how, when you go from the molecular scale water to the global scale water, the different, totally different, totally different behaviors that come out in each of these different scales. And so we have to be very alert to the physics as, it, as the physics changes when gravity becomes a big thing yeah. when uh, other factors come into play. Exactly. And, right. and the parameters become different as you go uh, to different scales, even if you preserve the physics. As I mentioned, the water balance equation, the infiltration processes. You may preserve the same equations because they are largely one-dimensional, but the parameterization would vary significantly across scales, and that's something we have to keep in mind. 